guys welcome back to my channel i'm esri welcome if you are new today's video is going to be a story time so make sure you grab yourself a cup of tea a glass of wine some popcorn whatever takes your fancy but before i get into it make sure you like comment and subscribe turn on your post notifications so that you're notified every time i post a video so today's video is going to be a story time about when i was engaged and i didn't even know it so where does it begin the guy involved in this story time i'm gonna call him hmm, call him warren and how did i meet warren so i met warren through a friend of my mum and how this went down is she had seen a picture of me my mum's friend and then she asked my mum does mimi i mimi that's my nickname does mimi have a man my mum was like no she doesn't but then before my mom gave her friend my number, she asked me, is it okay if her friend introduces me to this guy, his name's Warren? And I was like, yeah, go ahead. Like, there's no harm. I don't have a man, I'm not in a relationship. So why not, let's see where this could go. So my mom's friend gave warren my number and he called me and we spoke on the phone for about three days and the conversation was flowing we were getting along quite well and then he asked me out on a date and i agreed to go on a date with him so we met up for lunch and the lunch was fine i i enjoyed my time on the date with him i I enjoyed his company in person as well. So I was like, oh, this is actually going better than I thought it would. About two days after the day, he's like, oh, he's taken time off work sick because he's got severe back pain. And I was like, oh, okay, that's quite unfortunate. But if you're sick, you're sick. You can't go into work. Now, I happened to be on annual leave that week. And he said to me, oh, let's do something if you're on annual leave i'm off work that we should try and do something every day that week and i thought that's a bit much like you're off sick so why are you making time for me like why are you available if you're off sick but i'm not his boss so if he wants to take time off work and go for dates by all means so when we were on the date now he's like to me oh his cousin is back at his house now he lived in essex so I was thinking okay that's fine he's like oh i told my cousin to come down and meet me here to give me my key before he goes home and i was like wait meet you here like on the date or at my house we're like where's your cousin meeting you and he was like oh um oh no don't worry that he's gonna go to his cousin's house who lives in peckham to collect the key to get back into his place and i was like okay that's fine so we finish our day because it was daytime i think we had gone out somewhere in camden and we headed back to my place and then he was like oh um actually can you can you drive me to peckham to collect my key from my cousin and then i'm just gonna go home and i was like oh yeah that's fine i can do that like no big deal so we get to his cousin's house in peckham now and i've parked outside and he gets out of the car to me, I'm just sitting in the car because <laughs> he's just getting his key. There's no need for me to get down and I don't know his cousin. So I stayed in my seat waiting and he comes with, oh, come out, come out, come out. I'm like, come out to do what? Like, why do you want me to come out? He's like, I want you to meet my family. I was thinking, but I, I don't really know you like that. So I don't think I should meet your family just yet. That's what I was thinking in my head. But he kept like insisting so i got out of the car and i followed him like to his cousin's house so i walked in towards his cousin's house and then a lady opened the door and he was like oh this is my auntie who's his cousin's mom so i was like oh hi auntie because i'm nigerian you know you have to be respectful i said hi auntie how are you and she was smiling like so i didn't think anything of it i just said hi and then she was like oh come in guys come in and i felt a bit awkward cause i was thinking i thought the agreement was just that you collect the key from your cousin and then i drop you at the station or wherever and then we go about our day but 
his auntie insisted that we came in so we went in now we go into the living room and i kid you not the whole table was laid there was fruit peanut different like gifts and stuff and i was just looking at him like what's going on but i just thought maybe it's a they're having a party or something that i'm not aware of and yeah so then i sit down now next to him and his auntie starts talking about um oh warren's told us so much about you he really likes you mimi and he wants to marry you and i was just like marry me well you've never discussed the marriage with me and i've only been knowing you a week so why would you want to marry me after a week like you don't know me that's what i was thinking in my head and then i just looked at him like because obviously he must have said something to her for her to have gone to all this effort and then now be telling me that he wants to marry me so i, I was just looking at him and then the auntie's like oh um don't worry i know it's quite quick but when me and my husband met each other we were married within three months so i'm thinking uh-huh waiting concern me you and your husband like why are you telling me this and then he started grabbing my hand like and i kept pulling my hand away and he was grabbing my hand and i kept pulling it away and then it started looking awkward like his auntie was looking at us because thinking we're in front of your family why are you touching my hand like this anyway so I, I just kept my hand there and he was holding my hand and then his cousin his female cousin walks in and she's like oh um this food is for you sister and i was thinking you know what i'm actually not in the mood to eat but it's rude isn't it so i took the plate of food from her i just said thank you to her and then he had his food as well she gave him his plate of food he was eating so quickly like just eating his food and me i'm just looking at him then his auntie was like oh you can eat you can eat like feel at home you're part of the family now so i started eating the food i, I took one two mouthfuls and then i was like, actually mm, i don't want this anymore i don't want it she was like why i was like i just don't want to eat this food anymore and at this point i felt really annoyed and quite disrespected so i said to her because i need to call cool down i said um can i get some water please and she's like oh yeah we have bottled water i was like no i don't want bottled water because the bottled water is there in the room so i was like i will have tap water please and i'll get it myself so i asked them to show me where the kitchen was and i went off to go and get myself water well i didn't get water i just stood in the kitchen i ran the tap for a bit and then i came back now when i came back he started saying to me, oh, the marriage. And I was like, what marriage? And he's like, oh, you know, this is what I want. You're what I need in my life, this, that, and the other. And his auntie was also like saying why we would be such a good match. Now, I just sat there and was listening. Well, it was just going in and out, in and out. Like, I was just, I was over it. So I sat there and anyone looking at me, like, I was... I was over it. Actually, it was on a hundred. I was just ignoring the two of them. I was thinking, when you're done, I'll be able to leave. Because I didn't want to just get up and, you know, leave. Because of how, like, I had met him. I had met him through one of my mum's friends. Even though I didn't know his auntie and him. But I thought, you know, I still have to be respectful so i just sat there listening to what they were saying and then when i looked back to him when he had finished speaking i looked back and i could see that like his plate was done he had finished eating so i was like are we going now are we going and he was like i said no i i need to go like, cause you told me that we're just coming to collect the key. And then his auntie was like, "Oh, um, Mimi, how does it feel to be a bride?" I was like, 
a bride. I was like, a bride? I'm, I'm not a bride. Because to me, I just felt like you couldn't even have just the tiniest bit of respect for me. You didn't consult my family. You've never met my family or anything. And then you want to tell me how does it feel to be a bride? Is that how you marry someone or engage them? You didn't get down on one knee. You didn't ask for my hand in marriage. You didn't present me with a ring. So what do you mean? How does it feel to be a bride? I just grabbed my car keys at the side because they're on the table next to me. I grabbed my car keys and I got up to leave. So I get into my car now and he's followed me outside and he was like, oh, okay, I still need to get to the station. And in my head, I'm thinking, eh, what's that got to do with me? you knew where you were coming like you got yourself from essex to south london and you're at your family's home so why can't one of them take you to the station or better still why can't you walk to the station or get the bus to the station and he was like oh please please i'm sorry i'm sorry don't be annoyed let me make it up to you now i'm the type of person because like he had said sorry and sorry i don't hold grudges i like to be you know i like to give everyone the benefit of the doubt so i was like okay fine i'll drop you at the station and I said to him in the car, like, I'm going to drop you at the station, you go back home and we will see how this goes. Like, we'll just take it slowly for now. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. If I told him that, then, you know, eventually he will get the message that I'm just not interested. Like, you've done too much now. But uncle goes home now and he's texting me the whole day texting me the next day the next day after that and i'm ignoring him yeah now he knew where i worked but he didn't know what ward i worked on or what department he just knew which hospital i was at so one day i was at work now and i had been ignoring him previously but then i was at work and i see this message i'm outside so i'm thinking outside where he's like i'm outside your workplace i'm near your car and I was like, you know, my car. So I had gone into work for an early shift or half a day because I was doing a teaching session for student nurses. So I come out now and I see him. He's standing in my car, but his eyes are red, bulging, his face is swollen. And you could tell he had been crying. So I was like, why are you crying? Like, what is this? He was like, um... I love you i just want to be with you like you're the one i want to marry and i was thinking you don't love me because now it's been what two weeks that i've known you you, you there's no way that you can love me after two weeks so i was like mm, you don't love me and what are you doing at my workplace like you're embarrassing me now at this point i was very annoyed i was really annoyed i was like can you just get in the car please because people are looking so we got in the car now and i stopped at a coffee shop and whilst we're in the coffee shop, he's declaring his love. And I just said to him, can you stop? Like, just stop. I, like, you're making me feel uncomfortable. I've only just met you. And you're saying that you love me. You want to marry me. And I don't like it. Like, stop it. Just stop. So then he started crying again. And I was like, right, that's it. I'm done with this emotional blackmail. You can't cry just because I've said that I don't want to marry you. Like, I... I've only known you for two weeks like why would I marry you and I don't know you and I don't love you that's what I said to him and he continued crying so I just said to him and I know this is quite mean of me it's quite mean I hold my hands up very mean he was like I was like to him I'm seeing my ex so you're gonna have to get over me and then he was like I, that doesn't matter to me now he said that doesn't matter to him i was thinking you need to get some self-respect because any man that sits there and starts telling you that doesn't matter to me when you tell them that you're seeing their ex like what kind of man is that so i, I just got up <laughs> as i was done with him i got up from the table and i walked out the shop And he followed me. I was like, can you stop? Because at this point, I was thinking, mm, you're not my responsibility. You did what you did at your auntie's house. I got you, I let you in my car. You did what you did at my workplace. I let you in my car. Now you're crying in the coffee shop. 
trying to embarrass me again i said no the same way you found your way to this south london you'll find your way to essex because you're not my problem anymore so i jumped in my car and i drove away now again uncle continued to be texting texting and texting now i ignored him i didn't block him i should have blocked him because like he was doing too much but because again like my mum's friendship i didn't want that friendship to be diminished so i just kept in there thinking like if you keep seeing the blue tape on whatsapp that he'll get the message like i'm ignoring you like i haven't responded and i've read your messages but no he continued and then one day now he comes with i can see you were never interested in the relationship So me being the person that I am, he got pinned for me. I didn't say a word to him because at this point I had decided that silence is the best answer for a fool. So I'm not going to respond back to him. I haven't responded back to him and I think he's got the message now. I think now I might, I may have blocked him now. <laughs> I may have blocked him now because he had way too many chances that he should have. The way he was behaving that early on was quite erratic and usually if someone says that to me like within the first day or two of me meeting them that they want us to get married then i would be like mm, red flag red flag because why do you want to get married you're either trying to get married for uh, well uh, to me you're either trying to get married for one of two reasons either one you're a criminal or two you have an immigration issue but he had assured me that he wasn't trying to get married because of an immigration problem and he said he wasn't a criminal but what do i know all i knew is that i felt like i was being pressured to consent to a marriage that i don't want to be in i don't love you i don't know you and you're disrespectful because you haven't gone to ask for my hand in marriage from my family you haven't even met my family and then you're bringing me to your auntie's house to do introduction don't do that but yeah that is the end of this story time if you want to hear any other story times let me know in the comment section down below and i will see you in the next video goodbye